So when we spoke about uploading objects to our uh, S3 bucket, it made sense for us to keep it safe using S3. So now imagine a situation that you're working on a file. Let, let's take an example of editing a document and you want to make changes to the document. Okay. The thing that comes to our mind is working with design documents where I frequently make changes to it, but I want to preserve the previous version of the documents so that I can refer to them later when I want to. Okay. So in this case or situation like this, uh, you want to have a provision to enable versioning of your document and S3 can help you with this uh, so that you can enable or you can create versions of your objects using S3 object versioning. Okay, so we can create multiple versions of an object in one bucket which can protect us from the consequences of unintended overrides or deletions. You can also use it to archive objects so that you have access to previous versions as well. Just like keys for objects, version has something called version IDs. Okay, so you will have a version ID using which you can determine what the exact version of that particular object is. And one more important thing is you must explicitly enable S3 versioning on your bucket. Otherwise, you will not have versioning for your documents or objects that you store. And by default, versioning for S3 is disabled. And regardless of whether you have enabled versioning, each object in your bucket has a version ID. If you have not enabled versioning, the Amazon S3 sets the version of the version ID to null. So if you haven't enabled versioning, the objects in your bucket will still have a version ID, but those will be set to null. S3 versioning is enabled, then S3 assigns a version ID to that particular object. You should remember that versioning is applied to a bucket so that it applies to all the objects that you store in it. So let's see the visualization here. So we have a version enabled bucket that you're going to upload your objects that is like hello.jpg. So the method that we use to update is put. So when you upload an object that already exists, whose key already exists and the versioning is enabled, then the object will not be overwritten. So and in turn, it generates a new version ID for the same key. So here, if you see, we have two objects with the same key, but different version IDs. So this is handled by the bucket itself. So you have hello.jpg with the ID 1001, that is the latest version, and hello.jpg with the ID 1000, which is the older version. So both of the versions of the objects are available to us because the versioning is enabled in the bucket. And here you have the provision to access the previous version if you had the requirement. Okay. So what happens if you delete the object? So when you send a delete request, all versions remain in the bucket and S3 inserts a delete marker. So it means the delete marker ID that S3 just updated right now will become the current version. And so when S3 creates a delete marker, it will update the version and make it the current version, as I said. And when you send a get request again after the delete request, then S3 will throw a 404 response, which is not found. Okay, as I've already mentioned here, as you can see here, the hello.jpg has a new delete marker ID that is 3451. And once the delete marker has been set, it will become the latest version or the current version. And when you send a get request again on this object, it will return 404 because the delete marker has already been set and S3 assumes that it has already been deleted. So and it will send back the 404 error response. Okay, so I hope this was simple enough to understand. Let's move on then. So even if you have a delete marker, you can make a get request to a non-current version of an object by specifying its version ID. So if you see here, I can get 1001 or 1000 if I specify that in my get request. So here, if you see the delete marker has been set to 3451, which is the current version right now. And if I do a simple get request, I'll get 404. But if I do a get on 1001, that is the second version of the particular object that we had, then it will return me the object uh, hello.jpg with the version 1001. So I hope this was easy to understand that even though you have deleted the object and the delete marker has been set you can still retrieve the non-current versions okay by sending a get request with a particular id that you want and there is one more doubt you might have that can we delete an object completely yes you can so as i said yes you can very confidently i want to tell you that when you send a delete request with a specific id of the object that you want to delete s3 will not create any markers or marker ids and you can do this only if you are the owner of the bucket okay if you specify the id in the delete request it will specifically delete that particular version completely from the bucket okay no longer you will have that version id available to you so if you see here as well we have 1001 and 1000 and i sent a delete request with the id 1001 now it is completely invisible from our bucket it's no longer available 
okay so now it is no longer available to us so it is deleted completely to enhance security you can also enable mfa or multi-factor authentication to ensure that you don't do blunders with your api calls okay hope it was simple enough let's move on s3 data protection so as we just spoke about security earlier in the video let's check how can we have our data protected over s3 so as i've already mentioned here data protection refers to protecting data while in transit as it travels to and from Amazon S3 and at rest while it is stored in the disks in Amazon S3 data centers. So we are going to check both sides of it. So the first one that we have here is server side encryption. So here we request Amazon S3 to encrypt our objects before saving it on the disks in its data centers and then decrypt it when you download the object. So it's pretty simple. And the second one that we have here is similarly we have client side encryption where we encrypt data client side and upload the encrypted data to amazon s3 in this case you manage the encryption process and the encryption keys and the related tools as well so the basic difference that you have here is server side encryption is the encryption for the data that is basically residing on the data centers and for the client side encryption you basically encrypt the data and store it on amazon s3 okay and you manage the encryption process and the keys and the related tools as well so let's start off with server side encryption so server side encryption is the encryption of data at its destination by the application or uh, the service that receives it so it's like keeping your data secure while transit or at the server side so the first one we need to discuss is server side encryption with amazon s3 managed keys the, that is ssc s3 so when you use server side encryption with amazon s3 managed keys or SSE S3, each object is encrypted with a unique key. And for extra security, here S3 encrypts the key itself with a master key that it regularly rotates. Rotates means that it changes periodically and using that master key, it can again encrypt the unique key. Okay. Then when it comes to encryption, it uses 256-bit advanced encryption standard. So that is AES-256 to encrypt your data. So the second one that we have here for uh, server-side encryption is server-side encryption with customer master key, that is CM case, stored in AWS Key Management Service. So that is SSE KMS. So when you use server-side encryption with AWS KMS or SSE KMS, you can use the default AWS managed CMK or customer master key, or you can specify a customer managed CMK that you have already created, okay? But don't worry, if you don't specify a customer managed CMK, Amazon S3 actually automatically creates an Amazon managed CMK in your AWS account. So if you want to use a customer managed CMK for SCKMS, you can create the CMK before you configure the SCKMS. And the third one here is the server side encryption with customer provided keys or SSCC. So with server side encryption with customer provided key or SSCC, you manage the encryption keys and Amazon S3 manages the encryption. So that's the biggest difference here with the above two. So when it comes to client side encryption, it seems to be pretty simple. So as I've already mentioned here, client side encryption is the act of encrypting data before sending it to Amazon S3. So as a user, you encrypt your data before uploading it to AWS S3. So it's pretty simple. So you encrypt your data before uploading it. Okay, it's pretty simple, right? You have the key that you want to encrypt it with and you encrypt it and you upload it. So how you can do that? So to enable client side encryption, you have the following options here. So you use a customer master key that is stored in AWS key management service, that is AWS KMS, and you can encrypt your data. So that's the first option. And the second option will be like, else if you want to use your own key, then you can use the master key that you can store within your application. I hope you got the gist of it. So let's move on and discuss them in detail. So it's time to visualize the points that we discussed. Let's start off with SSE S3. So server-side encryption protects your data at rest and Amazon S3 encrypts each object with a unique key. So the important thing is you must include XAMZ server-side encryption header to request server-side encryption. Okay. So let's see the visualization here. So we have a client and the object here as we have got it right now with us. And this is Amazon S3 that we got here. And then you have your S3 managed unique key. And it will have a master key that rotates the unique key encryption every time periodically. Okay. And then you have your encrypted object using the AES-256 encryption. As I already told you, when you use server-side encryption with Amazon S3 managed keys, each object is encrypted with a unique key. Okay. So let's suppose this is the S3 managed key. And for extra security here, S3 encrypts the key itself with a master key that it regularly rotates. 
rotates so actually means that it periodically changes it using that master key again it encrypts it okay and the same key uh, will be used for encrypting your objects as well so this is pretty simple enough so you have a client you have the object on aws s3 you have the s3 managed unique key which is encrypted using the master key which rotates periodically and we have the as256 encryption which encrypts your object okay so this is a very simple example on how ssc s3 works let's move on so when it comes to ssc kms amazon s3 uses aws kms customer master keys to encrypt your amazon s3 objects and it encrypts only the object data any metadata that you have associated with the object is not encrypted okay and remember that you, you should include s3 colon x amz server side encryption uh, and the kms key along with the header that you have and let's see the visualization here so we have the client we have the object we have s3 here so now we have the key or the amazon managed or the aws managed cmk so as i've already mentioned when you use server side encryption with aws kms you can use the default aws managed cmk or you can specify a customer managed cmk that you have created already created okay so let's suppose i have not specified any cmks on my own so we can use the aws managed cmk that actually is stored in aws managed kms and then we encrypt the data uh, using that encryption and we encrypt the object we have the client we have the object we have amazon s3 and we have the aws managed cmk if it is not specified by the customer itself so we will be using aws cmk which is managed by kms and then we'll encrypt the object so and the last one that we have for server side encryption is that so this allows you to set your own encryption keys and you don't need to maintain any code to perform data encryption and decryption and amazon s3 does not store the encryption key you provide and amazon s3 rejects any requests made over http so use always https okay so you have the client here now you have the client managed data key and with that data key we are going to encrypt the object okay so you have the client managed data key and the client managed data key will be used to encrypt the object and then the object will be stored in the bucket so here this is a very simple example again that i wanted to share so you have the client you have the client managed data key and with that you encrypt the object and store the object in your bucket okay so this is pretty much all about a server side encryption let's move on to the client side